You know, some cartridges are like Frankenstein's monster. They're made. Others have parents. We're going to cover a parent today and a lot of its offspring on this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Well, parent cartridges, I think most of us realize that a lot of cartridges spring from another cartridge. We call those parent cartridges. And just the other day, one of my fans asked me if I wouldn't cover all of the offspring of the 30-06. And I will bet that many of you know many of them. How many do you think there are? Six? A dozen? Two dozen? Fifty? You know, the 30 out 6 has been around a long, long time, and it has inspired a lot of cartridges. But I think you might be surprised at really how few there actually were. Well, let's go back and figure it all out. First of all, the 30 out 6 arose in 1906. I think we all know that. But we do need to step back one generation to 1903, when the 3003 military cartridge came out. That was the predecessor of the 30 out 6. I'm not even going to go back further than that to talk about the predecessor of the 3003. We'll do that another time. But the 30 out 6 was just a slight variation of the 3003. The case was identical, except for there was about a 0.07, seven hundredths of an inch shorter neck, just the neck. And they went from a 220 grain round nose bullet on a 303 to a new Spire point, which is all the rage back in those days, and only 150 grain. They drove that around 2,700 feet per second. These days, the 30 out 6 with the new powders and primers and everything else will drive that 150 grain bullet at least 2,900 feet per second. And some handloaders claim they easily get 3,000 without excessive pressure. So it's quite a cartridge, really, all the way around. What was the first offspring? Did you say 270 Winchester? <laughs> well, I think you guessed it. 1925, Winchester obviously came out with the 270 Winchester version of that guy. And that thing looked like this. All they did was squeeze that neck down to take a 0.277 inch diameter bullet, and there's your 270. It'll throw 150 grain bullet around 2,950 feet per second. The 130 grain might get 3,100 feet per second, so it's known to shoot flatter, faster than the 30 out 6. But 9 out of 10 deer and elk surveyed don't know if they were hit with one or the other. <laughs> They're just both really darned effective. It's more about the shape and uh, construction of the bullet than it is the velocities and all the rest of it. But hey, suit yourself. There are a lot of fans. Those are the two big ones. I think this is probably the most famous of the offspring of the 30 out 6. So what was the next one down the line? Let's see, that was 25. You know, what was really happening was the 25 out 6 actually preceded the 270 Winchester, but not as a commercial cartridge. Needner was playing around with that. A.O. Needner was a gunsmith, and he was making what he called the 25 Needner, which was essentially the 30 out 6 neck down to 25 caliber. And that was quite popular for a long time, although in those days they didn't quite have the right powders to take advantage of that powder space and that narrow of a bullet. And it just kind of lasted a long time as a wildcat until I think 1969, Remington finally kapow, stamped their name on it, sent it to Sammy and got it approved as a commercial cartridge. So you could say the 25 out 6 actually preceded the 277, depending on how you want to look at it. Okay, so we've got a 27 caliber and a 25 caliber. What about a 28 caliber? That was getting to be pretty popular in the late 50s and into the 60s. And that ended up producing now, let's put it on this side of the 30 out 6 for a little closer comparison. The 280 Remington, 1957. That one did not take off like a rocket. Great cartridge. I mean, a 7 millimeter is always a good choice right in between the 27 and the 30. But Remington gave it some fairly low maximum average chamber pressure so it couldn't drive its bullets as to peak velocities. They had it chambered in some auto-loading rifle and they didn't want to be blowing that rifle apart or whatever they were worried about with the pressures, which is unfortunate. And then the 280 had a hard road to hold because it was so close to the 270 that mm, just had a, you know, it was like saying go on a race when the other guy is already 10, <laughs> 10 yards down the track. So the 280 remains a uh, really good cartridge, but 
it's just not popular. Hardly anyone chambers for it anymore, but they are chambering for something that sprang from it. The two. 80 actually improved. And as you can see, they just pushed the shoulder forward, gave it a 40 degree slope and bingo, there's your 280 actually improved. Adds about hundred feet per second to the 280. Not a huge deal, but it's really nice for hand loaders because you get longer case life with less trimming. It doesn't flow as much because of that sharper shoulder on it. Now notice this about both that and the 280, even the 280 is longer in the shoulder. Base to shoulder line is longer than the 30-06. And that prevents you from chambering the 280 in a 270 or a 30-06. Ideally, it should just be a little bit too hard to close your bolt on it. You could have a sloppy chamber and still get away with it. So still, you need to be careful with all of these, but it shouldn't happen. Now you notice this guy is wobbling. Why is that wobbling? Someone did not seat the primer as deeply as it should have been seated. And this is a commercial round, so I'm not gonna name any names, but eh, could do a better job of getting a full seat down there on that primer. So what is another one that came along? Another Wildcat that was out in the early 1920s, along with that 25 Needner, was the 35 Whalen. And that, of course, open it up to 35. Now, some say Whalen invented that thing. And in one magazine article he supposedly published in the American Rifleman in the 1920s, he claimed that he designed that thing uh, just in a simple sentence. But years later, he wrote a book and he gave credit to who he said really designed it. Um, I guess they had been talking about it. And he went off on a hunt up in the wilderness like he often did. And when he came back, this gentleman, Howe, James Howe, of Howe, Griffin and Howe, the rifle makers, he had produced the 35 Whalen and said, here you go, buddy. I named it 35 Whalen in your honor. Pretty cool. Um, that's real popular with oh, elk hunters, moose hunters, anybody who wants a little boom, more pump, a little more uh, wider bullet to thump the animal with. It'll shoot 225 grain bullets, 250, sometimes even 300 grain bullets, I've heard. Never tried that one myself. Now, we're missing something in here, and I do not have a, a sample of it, and that's the 338-06. That was another real popular Wildcat for a long time, and it was finally run through Sammy and made a commercial cartridge that anyone could load um, by um, Art Elfin of A-Square. That was around 1997 or 98, but it never really took off, even though there are a lot of people who say, man, that is just a great iteration of the 30 out 6 0.338 inch diameter bullet doesn't kick as much as a 338 Winchester Magnum, but golly, it sure seems to hit as hard and do just as good a job on game. So why not have a little less recoil? Now, the 338-06 actually got started. The genesis of it was way back in the late 40s after the war, perhaps the 1950s, with Elmer Keith. He really liked that one. He called it the 333 OKH. That would be um, O'Brien, Keith, and was it Hopkins, I think? So three guys working on it together, a gun maker, a cartridge maker, and then the great ideal man uh, was Keith. But they had 333 bullets from the 333 British cartridges of the day. Weren't very many 338 bullets around. But in 1958, when Winchester came out with the 338 Win Mag, suddenly there were a bunch of 338 bullets. So Wildcatters started necking it to 338 instead of 333. And uh, to this day, it, it remains a really outstanding cartridge, but almost nobody chambers for it unless it's a custom rifle. And it's darn hard to find ammunition for it. And now a real similar one is the 6.5-06, which you would think would be a natural progression from the 25-06 to the 270, falls right in between. And with the popularity of the 6.5s these days, you think that would be popular. I think that got Sammy approved again. Art Elfin at A-Square did it. And it just never really went anywhere either. Again, you can't find rifles for it. You can't really find ammo for it very easily. I think Nosler still loads some in there custom loads or semi-custom loaded ammunition, pretty pricey. And now with all the new 6.5s on the market, it's probably never going to take off. But that was a child of the 30-06. And I've got one more down here. What is this guy? Oh, this one. By golly, this might be a 338. Yeah, no, no, no. This is an eight millimeter. I remember now. Someone sent me this. This was a popular Wildcat after World War. 
uh, when the soldiers came back with captured German rifles, they were the 8x57, and they were chambered for the um, 8 point, no, but .323 bullet, 32 caliber. And they had the barrels for the 8mm bullets, but they couldn't find the ammunition very easily. So they hit on the idea of rechambering it for the 30 out 6 which is just a little bit longer than the 8 by 57 same uh, rim size on it, same body size, pretty close. So they just had to change up the chamber a little bit, load up the eight, uh, the 30 out 6 bullets or the 8s, which no, they would stick with the 8s because it was an 8 millimeter barrel at 0.323. So then they had the 30 out 6 driving it. So that's the 8 millimeter 30 out 6. Of course, that's not a commercial cartridge either. Now I've got a few others on my list here that are Wildcats and or proprietary cartridges. And uh, one of those would be the 375 Wayland. If you can believe that, you take that big 35 and you neck it up even further to a 37. <laughs> You've got the 375. Mm, it wasn't real popular, but some guys liked it for the big stuff. Then there was uh, going down on the scale, the 240 Super Varmager, which is a 270 neck down. So some would say, well, that's the the parent cartridge was a 270, but come on, does it really much matter if you start off with a 30 out 6 or the 270 or the 25 out 6 and neck them in any direction? It's kind of all the same baby springing from that 30 out 6. So um, that thing would throw a 100 grain bullet around 3,300 feet per second. And that was in the 1950s when the 24 Rage started. The 243 Winchester and the 6 millimeter Remington came out in 1955, I believe. So I would imagine that shortly after that, they started playing around with this one. And a modern version of it is uh, Kenny Jarrett's 243 Catbird. And Kenny claims that he, by blowing out the side walls, pushing that shoulder out to 35 degrees, he can get 3,500 feet per second with a 95 grain bullet. So that thing is really smoking. Now, there's another one that's called the 256 Newton that was out in the, uh, oh, the early teens, like 1910 in that range. And that was Charles Newton. He had his own rifle company. He sold commercial rifles and ammunition was built for it. Um, but it's essentially the 6.5 odd six. Just slight differences in the configuration of that one. And then there were the, the Gibbs cartridges. Gibbs was a gun nut up in uh, north of Moscow, Idaho. And he had a whole line of cartridges based on the 30 out 6 with the shoulder pushed way forward, sharpened to 35 degrees, and then necked down to the appropriate caliber. So he had the 270 Gibbs, a 30 out 6 Gibbs, I think a 338 Gibbs, uh, 25 Gibbs. He had a 24 Gibbs. And I did a little research on that one. He claimed 3,450 feet per second with 100 grain bullets. So that's a screamer. <laughs> And they say he was a little bit generous with his assumptions on his actual velocity or end. He was pushing the pressures really high to get that. But that is basically your 30 out 6 family. Now, there are a lot more Wildcats out there. Guys will just push the shoulder back a little bit or forward a little bit or change the angle slightly just so they can say they made their own Wildcat cartridge, I guess. And then if you really want to go out there and start to add them up, you need to probably drop down to the 308 length cartridges because even though people will say, oh, the 308 started with the 300 Savage, it was really the 30 out 6 that they worked with once they shortened it down to the Savage length to get your short action cartridge. That became the 308. And then from there, you got all kinds of them. And we could go down that long list, and that would really bolster the number of offspring that you can credit to the 30 out 6. But we'll stop with the standard length actions here in the 30 out 6 family. And that's what we've come up with. You know, I think pretty much all of them will do the job. Obviously, the 24 calibers are a little bit a uh, small bullet for the bigger stuff. And then, and then the 35s and 37s are a little too big for the smaller stuff. But golly, you really can't go wrong these days by sticking with the good old 30 out 6 Because with modern bullets, you end up getting, oh, say, a 200 to 220 grain bullet on a 30 out 6 if you got the twist rate to stabilize it. And they'll generally stabilize up to 220 grain round nose with a 1 in 10 standard twist in your 30 out 6 But with a new long sleek boat tail bullets with the secant ogives and a long pointy noses, you might not stabilize anything more than maybe a 210, 212 grain bullet. But still, driving those things to top velocities with the day's powders and such, you get a higher sectional density in that bullet than you would in equivalent bullet in a 35 caliber or even a much heavier bullet. 
and you're going to be pushing that lighter bullet faster. So you're probably going to be putting more energy on target downrange with the 30 out six and a heavier bullet than you would with the 35s, the 37s, or even maybe the 338s. Something worth looking at. Do your ballistics and study that stuff. Just putting a heavier bullet on a cartridge does not always guarantee you're going to have more punch. You will get more momentum in that bullet, but then as the bullet gets wider, you've got more drag in the animal too, and that can slow it down. Sectional density matters, so the longer bullets have a higher sectional density. Lots of things to think about, guys, but you really can't go wrong with a 270, a 280, 280 Acme Improved, 270, 30 at 6. I mean, the family is really productive. I think it's a great lineup. Um, suit yourself, check them out, yeah, and uh, hey, why not collect them all? <laughs> this is Ron Spomer. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Hanadis and shoot straight.